Hey guys, I wanted to thank everyone who subscribed to the channel. We're getting close to 10,000 subscribers, which is a big milestone. By the time you're watching this video, we may be over 10. I appreciate all of the support and I'm really grateful that I can be helpful to somebody. So I decided to start modeling this scene with toys because I knew that this would probably be the most challenging part for me. I'm not really that good at modeling creatures and the stylization part is really tricky. Like modeling a realistic fish wouldn't be that much of a problem, at least a low poly one. You know, just look at the photo and copy. But cartoonish creatures are a bit harder. Well, at least for me. I had some references for the machine itself, but not for the toys. So I decided to start with them since those are the least clear part for me. As you can see, I remembered to enable the screencast keys add-on only after I started modeling. I don't think I've seen a single one that starts automatically with Blender. I always forget to enable it. Maybe that's for security reasons. Like maybe you can capture keystrokes only in response to some user action. But I don't know, I just don't know why that would be the case otherwise. I was trying to spend as little time on toys as possible. Just to capture the essence and not spend too much time on details. Because like I already said multiple times, it usually makes sense to set up the whole scene first, set up the camera, and only then decide if you need additional details in any of your objects. I wanted those toys to look uh, cute and uh, a little bit derpy and maybe even a little bit shocked, you know, as if they were sentient and they realized that they are imprisoned in this huge claw machine. I don't think I actually achieved it to the extent that I wanted in the final render, but at least that's, that's what I was thinking of uh, when I was making them. I'm not really an expert on art, uh, but I think that if whatever you made evoked some emotion, that's probably a good thing. And it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. Like I think there are artists uh, that make specifically stuff that is disgusting. And it's certainly a challenge in itself, isn't it? So my personal goal is to try to make stuff that is at least not boring. And the easiest way to make something that provokes emotion is through characters, right? Even if that's just faces on a couple of toys. Because apparently faces mean a lot to us because evolution. That's not the only way, obviously, like lighting is very important. And like in general, you can tell a lot by just using inanimate objects. If you're not new to this channel, you know that I'm usually going for speed. I'm trying to model as fast as possible and uh, have a finished render in just one day. That's not how it always turns out, though, of course. Because I'm still learning and every now and then I take time to experiment with new tools or maybe watch some YouTube tutorials. Not to mention that of course you don't always get results that you want from the first try. Sometimes you have to experiment and of course sometimes you have to abandon something that took a lot of work just because you see that it doesn't work out. So sometimes one work can take two or three evenings. This one was a bit different though because this one was made on my last stream before my vacation. I knew that if I didn't finish it on that day, I wouldn't finish it at all. I wouldn't go back to it several weeks later. So there was additional pressure on me to finish it faster. The whole thing took about four hours. Uh, the stream itself was five hours, but of course I took a couple of small breaks. And also there is some stuff that is not necessarily related to work, but that needs to be done. Like for example on stream I realized that I needed to make some changes to the FBX export script, because I needed an option not to apply modifiers when exporting to Substance. So there was some Python on stream too. So the machine by itself is nothing too complicated. I wanted it to be expressive, you know. There is a red button that I made big enough to make sure that you would want to press it. I put some wheels on it, honestly just because I wanted to add some more details. Because it could look boring, it could look just like a simple box. So I had to think of ways to make it a little bit more interesting. I put toys inside just by hand. Using physics to position them inside is a consideration, 
but I felt like for this scene it would be an overkill because they are quite big and you don't really notice any intersections or anything like that in the final render. Not to mention that for artistic purposes you may want to move them manually for a better composition and so physics doesn't really make any sense then. Now I'm setting up the camera and some area lights. Most of the time I don't have any idea what lights I want, so I just experiment. I just have a basic idea of what mood I'm going for. I liked that HDRI because that was an HDRI of a circus, and I felt like that would fit the aesthetic that I'm going for. After I set up some lights, I remembered that I need to add some bevels because those usually look good with uh, a lot of rim lights. For all of the simple animations, I'm using simple driver expressions. I have a separate quick tip video on them. Those are actually incredible in my opinion. I used to use a little bit of After Effects back in the day. And perhaps my most favorite feature in After Effects was the fact that you could put expression in any property. And this is basically what drivers allow you to do in Blender. I didn't always know that you can put a hash sign in any field in the Blender to use an expression. Like obviously knew that there are drivers and I knew that you can use Python in them but I wasn't aware of this hash sign shortcut. And the funny thing is, the funny thing is how I discovered it. Because I discovered it by specifically looking for it. It was kinda random, I didn't read about it anywhere. I just thought to myself, what if instead of going through the whole routine of like, you know, the usual routine of adding driver to some property, what if you could just type your expression straight into the field? So I tried typing in some Python and obviously didn't work because Blender doesn't know if you're putting in Python or something else like some text in, you know, in, in text field. So I asked myself, how would I solve this problem? So I tried putting in some symbols before the expression and it turned out that hash sign was it. You can imagine the excitement of discovering something this way. I was very happy about it. By itself, driver expressions are very limited in what you can do, but thankfully you can add your own functions into the driver's namespace, which is exactly what I did. I added a couple of useful functions and some shortcuts for myself so that I could do more with expressions with less text. And I put them in an add-on, and the add-on is on Discord in the DF channel. Speaking of Discord, a lot of people are joining it lately, so thank you guys, it's really nice to see the community growing. On Discord you can share your work and ask for feedback, and also just ask for help if you're having trouble with something. Either me or some other nice people on Discord might be able to help you. So if you want to stop by and say hi, Discord link is under the video. Here at first I decided to try the red color for the machine, but then soon after I realized that the button needs to be red and it needs to be visible so the machine itself can't be red, so the machine ended up being blue. This time around I ended up with a much more efficient layer stack in Substance. I reused most of the materials and so I was able to texture the whole thing faster. As you can see, even though I don't have a lot of layers, I still name them. In Blender, for example, I don't care about naming my objects at all. I have just some basic organization with some collections and that's it. Because in Blender you can actually click on objects to select them. But in Substance you can't click to select layers by ID masks. That's why I have to properly name them, because that's the only way to know what the layer does. But yeah, in general I think naming things can be just a little bit overrated. It just depends on a lot of things. Like for example if your project is complex and if you're working on it for a lot of time, or maybe if you're not the only person working on this project, then yeah, sure, naming things is 
important, but sometimes it can be a waste of time. As you can see, I'm using Affinity Designer for the banner art. Affinity is just absolutely incredible in my opinion. It's more or less lightweight, it's pretty, it's incredibly performant. It has all of the features that I personally need for vector graphics or for photo editing in case of Affinity Photo. It's super stable, I don't remember it ever crashing on me at all. I think it sounds like I'm sponsored now. But honestly, it's just so impressive when something just works. Like I have to deal with a lot of different software for different purposes. And more often than not, there is something wrong with it. So when there is nothing wrong with something, you know, it stands out. I think one thing that Affinity is lacking is scripting. If it had that, it would be just perfect. Oh yeah, and another thing about uh, Affinity is that it's not subscription, it's just one-time purchase. I'm not, personally, I'm not that strictly against subscriptions. If Affinity, for example, was subscription-based, I would probably still choose it. Because I recognize that any software is kind of like a service anyway. Without updates, it will become outdated, it will become useless. And people who work full-time on updates need to be paid, obviously. When you think about it, a lot of things in society are subscription-based anyway. You can buy a good quality hammer and pass it to your grandchildren, but your PC will become obsolete in several years. And if you want to stay competitive, and if you value your time, you will have to eventually upgrade it. So in a way, computer hardware is a subscription service too. And it's perfectly fine. What I find problematic is when a company asks for a lot of money for a subscription, but doesn't care to deliver the best quality product. In my experience, that's some of the Adobe's products. But maybe that's just me, I can only speak from my own experience. At this point in time-lapse, I'm just doing some final tweaks, just to make some details look better. At this stage I go between Blender and Substance a lot, because in Substance you don't see the final render, you know, with all of the lighting that you have set up in Blender. As you can see, when I light the scene, I usually like to add a lot of lights, for all of the parts of the mesh that I want to highlight. It's obviously not realistic, but I think it works really well for this cartoonish stylized look. And I personally like this look a lot. It's very contrasty and flashy. It's a little bit in your face, you know? It's exaggerated. Just like all of the proportions are exaggerated, the lighting is exaggerated as well and I personally think it works really well. I'm using Eevee for all of my renders lately. Sometimes I switch between Eevee and Cycles just to see the difference, and a lot of times, honestly, I don't see any difference at all, while the performance boost is, of course, substantial. Like, for example, I was done with this model pretty late at night, because, like I said, I needed to finish it no matter what, and I was actually able to render the 600 frame animation and upload it before going to bed. It took just about 10 minutes. So this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.